Hello! This is the fourth episode in a series called How She Made That, in which I take a product from my shop, which is called RNR Woven Treasures. It's on Etsy, and I show you how I hand weave it. So let's take a look at today's project. It's going to be a table runner, and you can see that on this side it has the white diamonds with a stripe, and on this side it has striped diamonds. I like this side the best, but you can reverse it and have two different looks, two different table runners. So here we have uh, the diamonds on this side. So let's take a look at how it's made. Now, we're gonna have a design uh, feature, a design section, and a weaving. I'm gonna show you how to weave it. And then thirdly, I'm gonna show you something, a talk about the finishing of the product. So let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look at the design phase. Here we have the draft, and in weaving, a pattern is called a draft. And so on the far left side, in the top square, you have the lift plan. And the lift plan just says which shafts you're going to raise and in what order. Across the top, these big Vs are the threading uh, plan. And the threading is a 16 shaft pattern. So you have to have 16 shafts in order to do this one. Now, uh, down the side here, we have the treadling, or pedals, that we have on our uh, looms. We have the pedaling or treadling plan. So it's just a simple one. You just go down the row, and then back and down the row. And it, it requires 10 uh, pedals or treadles on your loom. So those are our requirements for this particular uh, pattern. Now, our patterns come from a handweaving.net site, which is a database <coughs> of patterns that some of them have been passed down through the decade, not just decades, centuries. In fact, let's look at this one. The origin of this one is from Germany. And it was published, the book that this particular draft was collected from was published in 1819. That makes it over 200 years old. And it's a beautiful pattern. Uh, as, you, as you saw, it's, it's a well-made pattern and it looks great on a table runner. So let's look a little bit more at the pattern. One thing that this site does is it shows Okay, come on, scroll down. Why won't it scroll down? Oh, yeah. So it's, <laughs> I got it. I got it now. Okay, here, down here, it tells us the floats. Now, the warp is the vertical threads, and the weft is the horizontal threads. So I'm looking in this second table here where it says that the maximum floats on the warp threads, which are the vertical threads, is 17. Now that's too much. You'd have a big loose thread across there. So what you can do in order to prevent this is by adding a tabby. Now tabby is just a plain weave. And when I weave it, I will show you how I did this with a very thin thread so that it wouldn't be seen that much. But that would lock down those big long floats so that they wouldn't be, oh, catching on things like a fork or, well, 17 is going to catch on a lot, um, and even 8. I don't like to do much more than 5 with the type of thread that I use. If you use a smaller thread, you might be able to get away with a 7, a 6, or a 7. Um, but I don't like to use much more than a 5. So uh, you can see that this, this particular draft, if I add a tabby to lock those warp threads of 17 and 8 down, then uh, it'll make a good substantial cloth. And it's a pretty simple threading pattern. You just go up and back and up and back, all 16 shafts. So you put one thread in each of the 16 shafts up and then back down again. This is called a point twill. Uh, because it's a, in a V shape. And it's also a very simple treadling pattern. So for those of you who are new 
or for uh, you've just gotten your first 16 shaft loom, you might give this a try. It's going to look great. So next, let's take a look at how it's woven. Okay, let's take a look at this unbalanced double weave. And as we looked at it before, it requires a doubling of the weft thread. And I've chosen to do um, it with a single boat. And so what I have to do is go around the floating salvage on one side, and that makes that um, a double line. So here then we go with our structural thread. And what this is, is this is a very thin, because I don't want it to show up. So I'm using this very thin, and it's also the same color as my warp. It's a cotton linen, and it's a 16-2 size. So you can see with the 16-2, and this, uh, this is a pearl cotton, and it is a 3-2, so it's a much bigger, much uh, thicker thread. It equals the size of the uh, warp threads. So again, to start, we're gonna take our pattern thread through, and I've got it to where I can put it through again. It's the same throw, and then I'm coming with this one. And then I, every time I throw that pattern thread, I've got to wrap it around the floating salvage. That way it'll stay all the way to the end over here. And that's how we're gonna do this. So we just go one, two. And if I did use a double boat with two of the pattern uh, threads on it, I would only have to throw it once across there and I'd have to change my program. It'd be a minor change though. And you see how this is making my design. What do you think? Isn't that cool? It's a pretty easy way to do it. So here we have a very unbalanced weave structure and we're using two boats, one thick and one thin um, thread and we're using even the, the thicker thread, we're doubling so that we get this nice standout color block here. So take a look at the finished product next and we'll see you later. Okay, now let's look at the finishing. One of the things, because this is made with rug cotton, uh, rug thread, it's a very thick thread, so it makes a substantial um, cloth. In other words, it's, it's not thin. It's, it's gonna be substantial, and I like to have that on my table runners and my placemats. In fact, my placemats, I like them to be a little stiffer, so I'll add a backing. So, for a table runner, we need to finish the ends. Now, the way you finish ends, there are a lot of videos about hemming the ends on this. And of course, you could turn it under. That would be one way to hem it. Just turn it under and under your sewing machine. However, if you do that, you kind of create a front and a back, and it's not totally reversible. So, on this one, I added about six rows of plain weave. And then I did my hem stitch, and you do a hem stitch with a little bit of your um, warp thread, this, this white ivory thread that I use. And you take a darning needle and just make this hem stitch that you can see in there. See that hem stitch? Then uh, leaving about, oh, I leave about eight uh, threads per bundle. When I cut it off the loom then, I've got to twist those bundles, twist those fringe threads. And the reason why I do this is because when it's washed, and one of the goals we have here at r, r Woven Treasures is to make something that can be used for a long time. We, we want this to be an heirloom that can be passed down through um, to your kids, through, through 
your generations. And so we twist the ends. And to twist the ends is just like making a rope. And what that does is it keeps those fibers nice and together uh, when you wash them so that when they get beat up in the washing machine, they don't fuzz out. And you can see here at the end, this is what they look like when they're all fuzzed out. You know, and you can trim this a little bit, but you don't want to trim it too short because you have to have some of the ends sticking out to make the knot. So that's the way we make our, our ends of our table runners. And again, there are three ways that we can do a table runner. We can back it in which it would be a, have a sewn backing on it so there wouldn't be no fringe. And we can put this fringe on or we can hem it, just a standard hem. Now, some, some orders I get, say they have cats and they're afraid that their cat's gonna play with this if it's hanging off the bottom of the, of the uh, table. And so their cat's gonna play with it and ruin it. I can also make it very short, you know, very short, like about here. I can, uh, as I said, I can sew it and make a hem or back it and make a backing on it. So those are your three choices of finishing on a table runner here in my shop. And you can see, you can also remember, you can choose any color you want. And this particular table runner has a um, side edge here that <coughs> is just a plain weave. But you can choose any color or a combination of colors that you like. I have a wide selection. There's lots of different colors of thread. And this is, this, um, is pearl cotton. So it makes a really nice color contrast with the ivory. So that's what I wanted to show you. Remember, hand weaving can be so fun to, to look at these patterns from t over 200 years ago. Um, so take a look at the shop and see what other kinds of patterns we have. And the origins, if you want to know where they came from or something about their history, I can help you out. But Take a look at this old German pattern. Isn't it pretty? The name of the shop is RNR &R Woven Treasures, and that's on Etsy.com. So it's RNR Woven Treasures.etsy.com. Uh, the link will be in the comments. And please like and subscribe and help our channel so that you can see all of the um, table runners from century old patterns come to life in your home. Thank you for watching. Bye now.